So the 1955 constitution was a result of um, a constitutional commission that was uh, led by Sir George Randall, who was appointed by the British Colonial Office to look into how to uh, increase voter turnout in Singapore. In the elections before the 1955 constitution kicked in, um, voter turnout was uh, low um, primarily because of a couple of reasons. So one of it was probably because uh, the number of elected seats on the legislature was quite low. The other thing was there it was a need for voters to register before they could actually uh, vote, even if they are eligible. These two documents actually represent a period of time in which there were very dramatic changes uh, to the politics of Singapore. Um, because of the Randall constitution, it really created uh, more voter turnout at the elections. And what happened then is that uh, there were huge queues where people turned up to vote for the many for the first time, and there was greater participation and a lot of um, um, a lot of anticipation um, about you know how the elections would turn out eventually become a, a self-governing uh, state. So in 1955, what they did was that they made uh, voter registration automatic, so as to ensure that uh, more more um, of the eligible voters would be able to, to vote. You know when you hear that 1955 elections um, results when they were announced over the radio, you hear the cheers of people for, for certain political candidates who were elected, right? So uh, definitely the, the, member for, for the Member of Parliament for Tanjung Paga, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, loudly cheered. Um, member of uh, Parliament for Bukit Timah, Mr. Lim Jin Chong, also very loudly cheered. Um, you can see the sense of um, popularity that these two uh, members of Parliament held. But on the other hand, Lim Yew Hock, not so loudly cheered. It was silence. <laughs> so there was also this sense that certain political, uh, certain members of parliament were, were far more popular than the others. Though. And that was also the first time in which we had a chief minister elected in this particular election. So David Marshall was our first chief minister. Um, he was also the leader of the, the Labour Front po uh, Party, which was popularly elected in the 1955 elections. He was very well known for his uh, very fiery speeches that he, he gave. Um, so for instance, the argument footage that you see of him giving a uh, speech uh, under the apple tree um, before many um, very interested members of public who gathered around in the city area to listen to him speak. And this tree was actually next to the Empress Place building, or what is now today, known as the uh, um, Asian Civilization Museum. So it, he, it was a very famous place because uh, Marshall kind of adopted it as his own and he used to give his, his political rallies there, he gave his speeches there and everybody associated it with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, another story that actually came out from this is that when he, after he was elected and after he came to office, he had a lot of um, disputes with the governor of the day um, because both in a way had some executive power but both were kind of held um, uh, opposing views. And one of the things that he was very unhappy, Marshall was very unhappy about, was that the fact that he didn't have an office of his own uh, within the city hall. And so he was very upset, he asked for an, an, an office, and he threatened actually, if, if they didn't give him an office, he'll move his desk under the apple tree, and he'll just, uh, you know, he'll just make that his office, um, yeah, putting pressure on, 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 the, on the colonial government then. Marshall, Although he stayed as chief minister for a very short time, he played a very big role because he actually led um, an all-party talks in, in the UK which involved um, both the Labour Front as well as the other opposition parties in Singapore um, along with the British representatives and Malayan representatives. His successor, um, Lim Yew Hock, uh, took on the role of the chief minister and he led on two other, two other talks in, in the UK and during this time, actually, a lot of the uh, a, lot, a lot of the points that Marshall refused to budge on, uh, Lim Yew Hock conceded on. So in the end, it was agreed that there would be an internal security council, uh, which would actually be uh, comprised of Singapore, UK, and Malaya. And and with as a result of that, the UK um, agreed um, to what eventually led to the, led to the 1958 um, State of Singapore Constitution. Um, this was the constitution under which we would actually become a full internal self-government.